devil should this Romeo be? Come he not home tonight? Not to his father's, I spoke with his man. Why that same pale heart herded wench that rose was alive, torments him so that he will run, he will sure run mad. Tibble, the kinsman to old Capulet, has sent a letter to his father's house. A challenge on my life. Uh, Romeo will answer it. Any man that can write may answer a letter. Nay, he will answer the letter's master, how he dares being dared. Alas, poor Romeo, he is already dead, stabbed with a white wench's black eye, shot through the ear with a love song. The very pin of his heart cleft with the blind glow of boys but shaft, and is he a man to encounter Tybalt? Why, what is Tybalt? More than prince of cats, oh, he's the courageous captain of compliments. He fights as you sing a crick song, keeps time, distance, and proportion. He rests his minimum, minimum rests. One, two, and the third, you are gruesome. Very a <laughs> a gentleman of the very first house of the, of the first and second cause, Ada, immortal, Pasado, and the Pronto, the first of the hay. The what? <laughs> no pox of such antic, the spin affecting antimon. These new tumors of Athens. By Jisu, a very good blade, a very tall man, a very good work. Why is not this a lamentable thing, Cram Sire, that, which, that we should be thus afflicted with these strange flies, these fashion mongers, these martyrs, who stand so much on the moon that they cannot sit at on the forward bench over the rocks and rocks. Here comes Romeo, here comes Romeo. Without his robe, oh, like a dry herring, O flesh, flesh, how art thou finished? Now is he for the numbers that betrayed Flavin. Glory to his lady was but a kitchen wench. Mary, she had a better love to Ryan Did Dido a Dowdy, Cleopatra a Gypsy, Gypsy, Helen and Hero, Hidings and Harwoods, this a uh, gray eye or so, but not to the purpose. Sen Senor Romeo, bonjour, there's a French solution to, to your French slot. He gave us the counterfeit fairly last night. Tomorrow to you both, what counterfeit did I give you? The slip, sir, the slip. Can you not conceive? Pardon, good Mercutio. My business was great, and in such a case as mine, a man may strain courtesy. That's as much as to say. Such a case as yours constrains a man to bow in the hands. Meaning to curtsy. Thou hast most kindly hit it. A most courteous exposition. Nay, I am the very pink of curiosity. Pink? Pink for flower. And is my comfortable flower. Sure will. Follow me with just now, till thou hast worn out thy point. That when the single soul of this worn, the just may remain after wearing the solely singular. Oh, single soul of just, solely singular for the singleness. Yes. Come between us, good Benvolio, my wits faint. Swift and spurs, swift and spurs, or I'll cry and match. Nay, if our wits run the wild goose chase, I am done. For thou hast more of the wily goose in one of thy wits than I am sure I have in my whole five. Was I with you there for the goose? Thou wast never with me for anything when thou wast not there for the goose. 
I will bite thee by the ear for thy jest. Nay, good goose, bite not. Thy wit is a very bitter sweet, it is as most sharp sauce. And it is not, then it will serve into a sweet goose. Oh, here's a wit of cheverly, cheverly, that stretches from an inch narrow at an L broad. I stretch it out for that word broad, which added to the goose proves a far a wide broad goose. Why is not this better than Rome for love? Now art thou sociable? Now art thou Romeo? Now art thou what thou art? By art as well as by nature. For this dribbling love is like a great natural that runs, lolling up and down to hide from babble and hold. Stop there, stop there. Thou desirest me to stop in my tail against the hair? Thou wouldst else have made thy tail large. Oh, thou art, thou art the same. I would have made it sh short, for I was come to the whole depth of my tail. And then, indeed, to occupy the argument no longer. Here's good meat here. Gentlemen, can any of you tell me where I may find the young Romeo? I can tell you, but young Romeo won't be older when you have found me than he was when you saw him. I am the youngest of that name, of or fault of the worst. You say well. Yeah, is the worst well, very well took. I paid wisely, wisely. If you be he, sir, I desire some confidence with you. Oh, oh. Like she will yeah. indict him to some supper. Abad, 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 so what hast thou found? An old hair whore and an old hair whore is very good meat in Lent, but a hair that is a whore is too much for a score. When it's whore's ear, it be spent. Romeo, will you come to your father's? Well, to dinner, thither. I will follow you. Farewell, ancient lady. Farewell, <laughs> lady, lady, lady. Mary, farewell. I pray you, sir. What saucy merchant was this that was so full of his robbery? A gentleman of Mary's that loves to hear himself talk and will speak more in a minute than he will stand to in a month. And a speak anything against me, I'll take him down, and a will lustier than he is, and twenty such jacks. And if I cannot, I'll find those that shall. Scurvy knave, I am none of his flirt gills, I am none of his skeins mates. If thou must stand by too, and suffer every knave to me, use me as at his pleasure. I saw no man that use you a pleasure. If I had, my weapon did. It should quickly have been out. I warn you, I dare draw it as soon as it another man. If I see occasion in a good quarrel and the uh, law on my side. Now before, before God, I am so vexed that every part about me quivers. Scurvy knave, pray you, sir, a word. And as I told you, my young lady bade me inquire you out. What she bade me say, I will keep to myself. But first let me tell you, if you should let lead her into a fool's paradise, as they say. It were a very gross kind of behavior, as they say. For a gentleman woman is young, and therefore, if you should deal double with her, truly it were an ill thing to be offered to any gentlewoman, a very weak dealer. Nurse, commend to me thy lady and mistress. I protest unto thee. Good heart, and in faith, I will tell her as much. Lord, Lord, she will be a joyful woman. What wilt thou tell her, nurse? Thou dost not mark her. I will tell her, sir, that you do protest, which, as I take, is a gentlemanlike offer. Bid her devise some means to come to 
thrift this afternoon. And there shall there and there she shall at Friar Lawrence itself be shrived and married. Here is for thy pains. No truly, sir, not a penny. Go to, I say you shall. This afternoon, sir? Well, she shall be there. And stay, good news, behind the abbey wall. Within this hour my man shall be with thee, and bring thee cords made like a tackle of stair, which to the high top gallant of my joy must be my convoy in the secret night. Farewell, be trusty, and I'll quit thy pains. Farewell, commend me to thy sake. Now, God in heaven, bless thee, hark thee, sir. What sayest thou, my dear nurse? Is your man secret? Did you never hear him hear say? She may keep counsel, putting one away. Or indeed, my man's as true as steel. Well, sir, my mistress is the sweetest lady. Lord, Lord, when t'was a little pretty thing. Oh, there is a noble man in town, one Paris, that would fain a neck of board. But she, good soul, has as meet to see a toad, a very toad, as I see him. I anger her sometimes and tell her that Paris is the proper man, but I'll warrant you. When I say so, she looks as pale as any cloud in the versal world. Doth not Rosemary and Romeo begin with both with a letter? Aye, nurse, what of that, both with an R. Aye, mocker. That's a, the dog's name, R is for the... No, I know it begins with some other letter, and she hath the prettiest sent sententious of it, and you and Rosemary, that it would do you good to hear. Many to my lady. Aye, a thousand times. 